In another video, I showed how to create family tables for variations of models in Creo Parametric. Onshape calls those part configurations, and there's some pretty neat functionality for creating those. And I want to create the same component that I used in the Creo Parametric video, so I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be a bolt, and I'm going to allow it to have different style heads, whether it's going to be a hex head or a star cut. Some will have chamfers. And of course, the diameter and the length are going to be configurable. But here's the thing about fasteners. Onshape comes with fasteners already. It's pretty nice. It's one of the things I like about it. If I'm going to go to my assembly tab over here. If I want to insert components, you can choose standard content. And here it's where you can choose whether you're doing ISO or DIN or PEM or SAE. And you can choose whether you're going to place bolts or screws, nuts, washers, and so on. And then depending on what you choose, you can configure which type that you want. And then you have the different values in here. So you really don't have to create fasteners in Onshape. But for the sake of comparing Creo Parametric Family Tables to Onshape, part configurations, I'm going to create a bolt manually. All right, I switched over to a, another workspace that I have. Let's create a new part studio. I'll click the plus sign and then create part studio. And let's start off by sketching our circles for the bolt shaft and the bolt head. Let's select a plane. And then I can click on the sketch button and let me right click and view normal to the sketch plane. I'm going to zoom in some and create my first circle. Let's snap right to the middle in here. And let's see, I'm going to start out with a diameter of five for the shaft. And let's create another circle. And this one will be for the head. Let's go to the dimension icon and let's dimension this one out here. Again, I'm going to start out with a diameter of five for that one and a diameter of nine for this one. So this is my first sketch. Let's hit the check mark and use the keyboard shortcut P to turn off the display of my planes. Now we'll select our first sketch circle here and use the extrude tool. Let's flip the direction. And initially I'm going to change this to a depth of 15. Hit the check mark. And I'm going to start renaming my sketch my features immediately just so I can keep track of everything. So this is going to be the bolt shaft. Now let's turn on the display of this other sketch again. Let's click on the extrude tool and I'm going to select both of these faces. Let's change the depth of this one to be the same as the diameter. I'll use a value of five in here and hit the check mark. And let's rename this one and this is going to be the bolt head. And let's rename the part itself. Let's change this to be called bolt. And right at this point, I'm going to start putting in some stuff for configuring this. In Creo Parametric, you have what are called parameters that you can use. They are called variables in Onshape. If I want to create a variable manually, I can click on that button over there. You can choose whether it's going to be a length, angle, number, or any. And for the name of it, let's say I wanted to create one called the diameter. I'll just call it DIA and give it a value of, again, I use a value of five to begin with and hit the check mark. You'll notice that this variable appears in the tree. I can drag it to relocate it. And what I could do is I could change these different sketches to use this diameter. But since I'm going to do a part configuration, let's jump into that right now. I'm not actually going to use this variable that I created. 
If you click on this icon on the right hand side of the screen, you can open up the configuration panel. And right now, nothing in here is configured. So I'm going to go to the drop down list and you can choose whether you want to have a list of different items, check boxes, and configuration variables. And so lists are sort of like the tables that you have in Creo Parametric for your families where you could say, hey, I'm going to have different diameters, different lengths, so forth and so on. But I'm going to use a configuration variable. And this is a lot simpler, I think, uh, for doing things. So for example, I'm going to have one that I'm going to call the bolt diameter. And the default value, I'm going to change to 5. The minimum value, let's say, is can go down to three and the maximum diameter for this one let's change this to I'll just use 25 so that is good for this variable let me hit the check mark so that is my first one and it's not being used by anything yet let's now create another one we'll go to the bottom of the screen this time create another configuration variable and this is going to be for the bolt length and again this is going to be a length Let's have the minimum or the default value be, I'll choose 16. Minimum value to maximum value. Let's make this 100. So that's good for this one. I'll hit the check mark. And right now, I've just created these different variables, but they're not being used by anything. Let's go back to the sketch. And I'm going to right click and choose edit. And here we have this five. I'm going to double click on it. And instead, if I use the pound sign, I'll get a list of the different variables in my model. So here's that diameter that I created initially. But I'm going to have this be equal to the bolt diameter. So I will select it and then hit the Enter key. And you can see in the usages list right now, the sketch diameter is using it. Let's also change this one. And I'm going to again use the pound sign. And this is going to be the bolt diameter times 1.8. That's good. So again, bolt diameter is being used by that. And let's hit the check mark to get out of that sketch. Let's now configure the bolt shaft. I'm going to right click on it and choose edit. And here for the depth, I'm going to hit the pound sign. Again, I'm going to change this to the bolt length and hit the enter key. So now you can see that in the usages list. Let's hit the check mark. And now for the bolt head, let's edit that. And the depth of this one is going to be the same as the bolt diameter. And hit the check mark. So in that way, I'm already setting up my model to be configured using these different values in here. Let's take a look over at the features list. I'm going to drag this down over here. So here you can see the different values that can be configured. We have our bolt diameter and our bolt length. So now let's continue on with our modeling. Next up, I'm going to create the different heads that the, or excuse me, the different cuts that are going to be in the head. And the first one we're going to do is going to be a hex head. So let's create a sketch. I'll pick this surface over here, right click and view normal to the sketch plane. And for this one, I'm going to use some construction geometry. Let's go to the construction command. And then I'm going to make three construction circles for making my hex. Let's grab this and we're going to drag it out over here. And then let's make another one and I'll let it snap into here and snap to there. And the third one, there we go. That's good for the construction circles. Let me get out of construction mode and let's dimension this. And the dimension for this construction circle, right now it's got some value in here. But again, I want this to be controlled by that bolt diameter that I created. So let's use the hashtag and choose bolt diameter. This is going to be bolt diameter minus one. Now, since I am subtracting a value in here, I'm going to have to use millimeters to make sure that it knows that what set of units. If you don't type in millimeters, you're going to get an error in there. 
So just over here, that looks good. Now let's create some lines for our hex. And I'm just going to snap in there to there to there to there to there there and there that is good oops looks like I missed one of my lines let's create a one in here that I didn't get there we go and the sketch turned black because it is fully controlled let's now hit the check mark to complete this and let's rename this this is going to be my hex sketch So let's select the hex sketch and do an extrude. And let's flip the direction and it's going to remove material. And the depth of this one is going to be the bolt diameter minus one millimeter. And hit the check mark. And so there we have our hex cut let's rename this one now for the star cut just to help myself out I'm going to suppress this cut for a moment I will right click on it and then choose the suppress command and let me turn off the display of the original sketch and let's create a sketch for the star cut let's click on the sketch button select the same top surface right click and hold on I'm not sure I got the right thing let me cancel out of here let's create our sketch I'm gonna sketch on this surface that's good let's right click and view normal to the plane and once again I'm going to do three construction circles let's go to construction mode and the first circle drag it out and then for the second one, there we go. And for the third one, awesome. Let's go back to dimension. And I'm going to control the dimension of this circle. And again, we'll use hashtag and grab the bolt diameter. And we want that minus one millimeter. And again, it adds it to the usages list over here. Now let's create some regular circles for parts of our star feature. Now let's put in some equals constraints and throw in a dimension and this is going to be a value of 0.3 and they all adjust together. Now let's throw in some tangent or excuse me some arcs. Uh, let's go and create an arc and I want it to go from here to here and let's repeat that a bunch of times and let's throw in some tangency constraints There we go. That looks good for my cut. And another thing I really like about on shape is that, you know, I don't have to trim this. I've got this overlapping geometry, but that is fine. Let's hit the check mark. 
and rename this one. I'm going to call this my star sketch. Let's now select the star sketch and extrude. Flip the direction. Have it remove material. And for the depth, again, hashtag, and this is going to be bolt diameter minus one millimeter. And hit the check mark. And let's rename this to the star cut. Last couple features that we're going to put in here, let's throw in a fillet on this edge. Value's too big, that's why it's red. Let's change this to 0.5 and hit the check mark. And let's throw in a chamfer on the bottom edge. Again, the value's too big. Let's change that to 0.5 and hit the check mark. And so that way, I have this configured for the diameter and for the length. And because I wrote in those different equations, when I change the diameter or the length, these are going to update. Let's change this to a value. Let's try a value of eight. And you can see that it updates, but the length stayed the same. Let's change this to a value of 25. And again, that updates. So we've got everything configured on those two different things. Again, right now we're only seeing the star cut because I have the hex cut suppressed. Let's bring this down to value of three. And again, that changes. So this is kind of nice. I'm not, I have a whole bunch of different features that are driven by these two different values. I haven't created this whole big table where I've configured all the different value combinations for the diameter and the length. In the next video, we'll take a look at adding in different features to be using with a checkbox uh, as opposed to using these different configuration variables in here. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.